Good morning, Rise and Shine. It's about 6 a.m. right now. We're having a cooler start this morning than we did yesterday, but possibly because of all of those storms that came in overnight. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is April 2nd. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we hope maybe you slept through those storms, but I think a lot of us woke up. Yeah, at least heard the rain or the hail or the storms. So we have the oak pollen and now we're probably gonna have mold back yeah. in the area yeah. due to moisture. Mike Ostrage is here with more of that wonderful news this morning. <laughs> oak did go down yesterday yeah. from the previous day. I mean, it's still on the high side. Hopefully some of the storms, yeah, did wash that out, but yeah. uh, you know, we got mold and, and we're not done with the, the peak of the season, although we are kind of in the, the peak of it right now. So the best is yet to come. <laughs> as far as oak, okay, <laughs> as a far, song, right? something like that, yeah. yes. And as far as weather, the best is uh, yet to come because with this front that moved on through, it didn't help touch off some of those uh, strongest severe storms last night. Some did reach severe levels with some of that hail. And then in behind that, we've got great weather in store. And actually, if we could even see a little bit further off to the west, got a lot of clear skies being reported over there right around Hondo and starting to see some broken clouds. That's the report out at the airport. Here's the uh, satellite and radar loop over the past couple of hours. All the rain moved on through those severe storms that moved through last night. And you can see just a few. You got to kind of squint to see it. But uh, just some leftover clouds here clearing out there off to the west. And actually, temperatures have dropped now a couple of notches. We were at 63 last hour down to 61. 49 now in Kerrville. And that's what we can expect even here in town over the course of the next couple of days. So it's definitely going to be jacket weather over the next few days, plus the drier air that continues to move on in because we have those dew points well up into the 60s. I mean, you could feel it yesterday afternoon. It felt like it was early summer. It's all changing. Not much of a breeze right now. So once these clouds break up a little bit with the drier air and no wind, that's really going to allow temperatures to drop down like they are doing in Kerrville right now in the upper 40s. And that'll be the case here in town. As we were talking about oak, 5320 yesterday's reading. Mold is moderate. Yeah, oak may be going down. Of course, the updated count comes out in a few hours. Oak, or excuse me, mold is probably going to be going up, but then it will drop over the next few days given the, uh, the forecast. Today, we are going to have skies continue to clear on out. 74 degrees today at noon, and then we top off at 80. Normal high 78, so right about where it should be. Low humidity, windy today, however, and then, like I said, great weather for the rest of the week. What about the weekend? What about next Monday for eclipse viewing? Things have changed just a little bit, and we'll get it all sorted out in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on, sir? All right, Mike, yeah, the, the oak, the rain, felt it all last mm -hmm. night, as is the case here. As we took a look, a look here, I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. This is going to be our biggest traffic, traffic trouble spot that we're seeing at the moment right now. So we have uh, SAPD officers out here, and now we have a couple of Textile Hero trucks out there to take care of some drainage issues out there in the eastbound part of I-10 at UTSA Boulevard uh, because of a lot, all that rain that we saw last night. So we had some standing water, some high water. So you could kind of see some of that ponding right there. And we saw a couple of those uh, textile workers kind of uh, surveying the situation, trying to figure out how they're going to clear out some of these drainage problems and this standing water here. But uh, you do see traffic is moving through right now on the uh, I-10 eastbound there at UTSA Boulevard. As we take a quick look at our maps again, the left main lane is closed right now, as we just saw from our trans guide shot. But if you're coming in from 1604, UTSA Boulevard may run in to this situation if you're about to head outside right now. A couple different things starting to pop up across our maps here. Far west side, US 90 eastbound, Loop 1604. We have a stalled vehicle in that area. And let's take you to the downtown area because we have a stalled vehicle being reported. I-35 southbound at uh, Laredo Street. That's going to be right there. Uh, Laredo Street, excuse me. That's going to be right there right before South Alamo Street. So may run into some activity there if you're heading south from the downtown area. But the rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. Again, biggest trouble spot we're seeing right now northwest side i-10 eastbound at least one main lane closed because of standing high water due to all that rain that we saw last night mark and stephanie back to you guys thank you rj well family members are grieving the loss of a 33 year old woman killed in her own home anna ojeda was found friday inside her lucky ranch home on the far west side now last night friends and family held a vigil at her front door on davalos lane Around the same time, the medical examiner confirmed that Ojeda was stabbed to death. She leaves behind a six-year-old daughter. Oh, my dad is a beautiful woman. And Keno, a mother and daughter and friends. 
everybody loves her so she be hard worker and she don't deserve this that she happens on Friday. Ojeda's mother is pleading with neighbors who might have video or might have witnessed something to call Bear County investigators. For a few hours Monday, the Bandera County Sheriff's Office thought they had their suspect. They announced the suspect in the killing of an 88-year-old man was in custody in Mexico. Robert Isaacs' body was found in Crockett County back on November 17th. And police identify this woman, Frida Michelle Thomas, as the suspect. For a few hours, they thought she was in custody down in Mexico, but that turned out not to be the case. Isaacs' granddaughter tells KSAT she is disappointed. You go from one extreme to the other. And again, you, you go back to the place you woke up in. But it's it's sad um, and, it, and it's frustrating because it was a relief to know that there was actually going to be some, some progress made. Investigators are still looking for Freedom Michelle Thomas. If you've seen her or know where she is, call the sheriff's office. Their number is 830-796-3771. Uvalde Mayor Cody Smith is resigning from the job less than six months into his tenure. Smith cited recent medical issues as his reason for resigning. Back in November, he defeated um, the mother of a Robb Elementary victim, Kimberly Rubio, to become the mayor. Now that Smith has resigned, Mayor Pro Tem Everardo Zamora will serve as mayor. The people of Uvalde will choose their new leader in November. Three people were injured Monday morning in Southwest Bear County after a utility crane fell onto a moving SUV. Two women in the vehicle and a tech stop worker were hurt. Von Ormy's police chief says a tech stop bucket truck was doing some work on a grassy median near 35 and Benton City Road around 11 yesterday morning. When a worker tried to adjust the bucket truck, the crane came crashing down on that passing SUV. The crane landed on the vehicle's hood, narrowly missing the roof. The boom kind of landed kind of square on the vehicle. So had it landed on the windshield or had it landed on the roof of the car, uh, we'd be looking at a totally different situation right now. Right now there's no word on what caused the bucket truck to topple over, but it may have been situated on an uneven grassy surface. In your morning headlines, a 12-year-old student is in custody in Finland after a school shooting. There were other students who were injured, and one child has died as a result about that. It happened not long ago, just outside of the capital of Helsinki. In the past decades, Finland has witnessed two major deadly school shootings. Back here at home, a doctor who spoke with KSAT after state health officials announced someone in Texas was diagnosed with bird flu says do not panic. Bird flu isn't new and originated decades ago in 1996. What is new to researchers is the transmission. The person here in Texas got bird flu from a cow. Dr. Larry Schlesinger is president and CEO of Texas Biomed. He says to not worry much because there's been no human to human transmission of bird flu on record. We shouldn't panic because the virus is not new. Transmission is low. We really know of no human to human transmission. Dr. Schlesinger also said Texas Biomed is constantly working to create tools to guard against all kinds of viruses. And be sure and tune in to GMSA and GMSA at 9 tomorrow. Quesa Community is hosting a donor registration phone bank. Anyone who would like to be added to the Donate Live Texas donor registry can call and speak with a Texan Oregon Sharing Alliance phone operator and register. So the live phone bank, that's going to air during our GMSA from 5 in the morning until 10 a.m. Also looking ahead. Don't miss Doc Talk here on KSAT. We take your medical questions to local doctors and get you answers. Just scan the QR code to send in questions for the doctors. Doc Talk airs every Thursday on the news at 6.30 p.m. And National Health Week is underway. So on Thursday, Metro Health is hosting a public health fest. Anyone can go and get vaccinated, screened, and get more information about health programs around San Antonio. So here are the details. The Health Fest is happening at Mission County Park on Padre Drive. Again, that is Thursday from 3 to 6 p.m. Trending overnight on KSAT.com, Bill Nye the Science Guy will be in the Texas Hill Country Monday for the total solar eclipse. The beloved scientists and Planetary Society are hosting the Eclipsorama 2024. It's a two-day camping festival up in Fredericksburg to discuss all things space and have one big eclipse viewing party Read all about it on KSAT.com.
Time now is 6.09 and 60 degrees for now. Still to come on GMSA before 6.30, Spurs are going to have to finish the rest of the season without two of their better players. Look at injuries and what it means for next season potentially. And after the break, the Houston Astros got their first win of the season in style with the league's first no-hitter of 2024. And outside with live cam, about 10 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. So factor that into getting the kids ready for school or before you head out the door for work. Welcome back at 613. Well, Spurs guard Devin Vassell and forward Jeremy Sohan will both miss the remainder of the season due to injuries. Vassell underwent an MRI here in San Antonio yesterday, and the exam revealed a stress reaction in the third metatarsal in his right foot. So he is done. Vassell is averaging career high 19 and a half points per game. Mia Sohan was diagnosed with a left ankle impingement. After a consultation with outside experts, the Spurs medical team determined arthroscopic surgery is the best approach to correct that. So Sohan and Vassell will miss the Spurs final seven games. So we'll see how the Spurs do tonight without them. They play on the road against the Denver Nuggets starting at 8 p.m. women's college hoops. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese put on a show in the women's Elite Eight as Iowa faced LSU in the national championship game rematch. Reese had 17 points and 20 rebounds, but followed out late in the game. Clark had a masterclass 41-point game to go with 12 assists and the win as Iowa gets through LSU this time around. Now, Iowa wins 94-87 to and moves to the Final Four. They'll play Connecticut, who took down USC in the late game. That was a heck of a game. Well, after taking two of three from the Cubs, Josh Young and the Rangers opened a three-game series in Tampa and came out with a devastating injury to Young. Top of the first with uh, two runners on base. Young gets a pitch up high and crushes it to left field for a three-run shot. Rangers lead the race 3-0. Top of the sixth, same soar. Young comes up with an RBI single to center, scoring Corey Seager, and it's 4-0 champs. Now Josh went three for four with four RBIs before getting hurt. Top nine bases loaded for Young, and the pitch hits him on the right wrist during the swing. He drops the bat, puts his arm above his head in pain. He left the game for good, and then during post, Rangers manager Bruce Bocci, is that his name, Bocci? Bocci, thank you, said Young suffered a fractured right wrist and did not set a timetable for his return. Rangers won the game 9-3. Strohs get their first one of the season 10-0 over the Blue Jays. But the big news in that game, Astros right-handed pitcher Ronel Blanco threw a no-hitter in his eighth career start. It's the 17th no-no in Astros franchise history. Blanco struck out seven and walked two. It was a very happy day for the Houston Astros. <laughs> yeah, very impressive there. Time now 616 and still problems there at I-10 at UTSA Boulevard. Let's check back with RJ. Yeah, guys, still monitoring the situation here. By the way, the women's tournament, that's been must-see TV. I actually Absolutely. lost some sleep yesterday <laughs> because of that LSU-Iowa uh, game. Man, Clark and Reese were awesome to watch. All right, not awesome to watch here. As Stephanie just mentioned, some uh, situation that we have going on far northwest side, I-10 eastbound at uh, UTSA Boulevard. So we have a couple of emergency vehicles here, the Textot Hero Trucks, as they continue to work on some standing water, some high water here on the eastbound parts of I-10 uh, because of all that rain that we saw in the overnight hours here. So the left inner part lane here, the main lane, is has been closed for the moment right now as crews continue to work on some drainage issues in that area. They're hoping to unclog these drains out there. Of course, there's been a lot of construction taking place in this area, so it might be an ongoing situation here as we make our way through the rest of the six o'clock hour. We we're hoping to get that cleared out a little bit earlier. Stalled vehicle, US 90 eastbound at loop 1604 as we give you a quick run through of some other things taking place here. 35 southbound at Laredo Street. Uh, still have our stalled vehicle there for all of our drivers that are coming south of the downtown area. Area and a new stalled vehicle being reported I-35 southbound at Loop 410 out there on the uh, southwest side. The southwest side's been uh, very busy over the past 24 hours, so there was a pretty big crash there yesterday there as well. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. We've cleared out that construction northeast side, so that's good news for our drivers out there. So we're looking at I-10 eastbound here at UTSA Boulevard. Again, that innermost lane there, the left lane cut off there. And this was a shot I wanted to show a little bit earlier because uh, just checking out those clouds out there, I thought my screen was 
was actually just dirty. Had some <laughs> dust on it. Uh, it turns out just uh, actually some of the clouds there uh, out there at the Tower of the Americas. So I uh, just thought it was a pretty cool shot. Well, RJ, it could be both. It's that too. <laughs> well, and a little also, shine there. Yeah. <laughs> because that's looking a little bit toward the west, say northwest, and, and mm -hmm. clouds are starting to break up a little bit, so that's a good indication of what's going on out there. One thing I want to emphasis, and we've always, you know, everybody keeps saying, what's it going to be like on Monday? What's it going to be like? Yeah. Even now, today, as I was talking about and have been talking about how things ha are looking a little more encouraging, even th from model run to model run, which some of these long range models come out every six hours, things have changed a little bit as well. So, you, I mean, we're doing the best we can with this, but this yes. is something that can't be written in stone until once we get into mm -hmm. the latter portion of the week and, and actually into the, uh, the weekend. But um, one thing, there are gonna be some clouds around here. It is looking like in one way, shape or another. As far as today, a couple of leftover clouds this morning, 57 degrees, and some of that rain continues to work its way off to the east if there's any leftover, and then an absolutely spectacular day Get out and enjoy it. Some yard work. Um, just take the dog for a walk, something like that. And the nice thing is it's going to be sticking around for a while. All right, let's look at the countdown. Six days and counting. It is right around the corner. You can almost taste it. It's so close. And yes, some clouds are likely. Uh, Going to say a 20% chance for some rain around here. I'm going to show you that in the long range model in just a second. And still the, the uncertainty there because, like I said, when I came in the morning, it came in this morning, looked at some of the computer models, which had it started to change a little bit last night and looking more encouraging. And, and they're kind of changing even a little bit more. So, I'll show you that in a second. Last night, had some of those uh, those hailstorms and those severe storms that moved on through here. And one thing you can point out, thank you very much for this picture. Look at the rings on these hailstones right here. A good indication where the, the hailstone freezes, forms up, and it gets tossed back into the atmosphere because of the updrafts there, and then it refreezes on top of that. So layers and layers build up on those uh, hailstones, and that's what that picture showed right there. So thank you very much for that one. All right, looking off to the west, you can see See, the clouds continue to break up and we've got very dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, which means we're going to have those beautiful blue skies out there. Yesterday we did hit 87, 102 in Carrizo Springs, 101 in Spofford, and then today, whole different story. We're still going to be just about at normal. Normal high is uh, 78 degrees. We're going to be at 80 out there at the airport, which, yeah, I can't complain about that. So here's what's going on. This low has moved on through the area and is moving through at the surface. We get the have the front that moved on through. Drier air continues to get pumped down in here for the next few days. So fantastic weather. Then we head in toward the weekend and we start to get more of a south uh, westerly flow. So more clouds move on in here. We get the disturbances wrapping around. That's going to give us that chance for some rain late Saturday into Sunday. And as it was looking earlier this morning, that then we get somewhat of a break in the action where that rain moved on through and then we have this next low which will be working its way in here and giving us an, another chance of rain by the, the middle portion of the week by Tuesday. However, there are some now long range computer models that have, first of all, here's the rain that comes in here early Sunday. We clear on out somewhat, but Watch what happens as we go into Monday. We start off with a lot of clearer skies, maybe some high clouds around here. Here's some of this moisture that wants to come in from the Gulf of Mexico. How soon this moves on in here, or if it does at all, that is still kind of a wait and see situation for Monday. Like I said, it's looking a little more encouraging, but nothing's written in stone as of yet. One thing for sure for the rest of the week, it is going to be just fantastic. Cool in the morning, nice in the afternoon. We have that rain chance then late Saturday into Sunday with somewhat of a front that moves on through here. That'll get rid of a little bit of the humidity as well for Sunday. And then Monday, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be some clouds around here. Got that little 20% chance for a few showers and we'll just see if that moisture decides to come back in here from the Gulf sooner than later. Hmm, it will be interesting to see what happens on mm -hmm. Monday, but like you said, I guess we'll kind of wait for the weekend to find out about that. We could just move the eclipse up to tomorrow. It'd be perfect <laughs> weather for Can we do that? Uh, Is that an option, RJ? No. It's so we make some phone calls? <laughs> the 622, 60 degrees. Scooch it down. Uh, we'll Put an eclipse.
Struggling with the highs and lows of Bipolar 1? Ask about Braylar. Because you are greater than your Bipolar 1. And you can help take control of your symptoms with Braylar. Some medicines only treat the lows or highs. Braylar treats depressive, acute manic, and mixed episodes of Bipolar 1 in adults. Proven full-spectrum relief for all Bipolar 1 symptoms. And in Braylar clinical studies, most saw no substantial impact on weight. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Call your doctor about unusual changes in behavior or suicidal thoughts. Antidepressants can increase these in children and young adults. Report fever, stiff muscles, or confusion, which may mean a life-threatening reaction, or uncontrollable muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death, weight gain, and high cholesterol may occur. Movement dysfunction and restlessness are common side effects. Sleepiness and stomach issues are also common. Side effects may not appear for several weeks. Ask about Raylar and learn how AbV could help you save. In your morning consumer headlines, Apple moving past some of its own devices. The iPhone 6 Plus is now on the obsolete list, meaning no more repairs or service at Apple stores. The iPad Mini 4 has been added to the vintage list, along with the red iPhone 8. That means only two more years of service. OpenAI is making it easier to use ChatGPT even if you don't have an account. So users can now access the company's order platform for free without logging in. And you can opt out of data training. OpenAI says the move is part of its effort to get more people to experience the benefits of AI. And a groundbreaking device will allow people with vision problems to experience next week's solar eclipse. Researchers at Harvard have developed light sound, which converts sunlight into music played through headphones. Bright light sounds like flute and dimmer light sounds a bit like a clarinet. Oh, that's what I used to play. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 60 degrees for now. Let's check the roads with Transguy. And uh, earlier, SAPD was out there kind of guarding this spot that uh, is a bunch of leftover water from overnight storms on inbound 10 at UTSA Boulevard. But it looks like they have headed out as that puddle starts to dry up. Outside with live cam this morning, about 10 degrees cooler than this time yesterday, but still some humidity because we did get some showers and storms in the overnight hours with a bit of a cool front. Yes, but you can notice that cold front yeah. when you step out this morning. Hey, good morning. It is 630 and it's Tuesday, April 2nd. Let's check in with the man, the myth, the legend, Michael <laughs> Parker <laughs> Osterhage. Oh, your full name. <laughs> You're not in trouble. Oh, okay. Not yet until we see the eclipse forecast oh. and then we'll talk. <laughs> yeah, good, good point. Huh? Just the messenger here, though. Uh, yeah, things, it, I'm trying to see if there's the glow of the uh, the sunrise. Sun's going to be coming up in about uh, 50 minutes or so. Got some uh, clear skies out there. It should be a spectacular sunrise. We're already starting to clear out, especially in parts of the hill country. We're at 61 right now, and that number has dropped down a good 15, in some cases, 25, 30 degrees, especially in the hill country from yesterday when we had all the humidity and then the uh, winds have now shifted around. Drier air is coming on in here and with the skies, the clouds breaking up a little bit more, we will continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours here in town. Already down to 47 in Kerrville and I point that out because for the rest of us, that's what we're going to be looking at over the next couple of mornings, just upper 40s, low 50. So it's going to definitely be on the chilly side. 61 in town, 57s from Balverde over toward New Braunfels, as well as Castroville and 61 right now at Stinson. And again, this drier air continues to move on in here. Look at that. Lost Maples has a dew point down to 29 right now. So really, really dry air. Oak is high. It came down a whole bunch by about 4,000 or so points from the previous day and mold is on the moderate side. Hopefully the rain washed a little bit of that out, but with that uh, moisture, pretty good guess that mold may be going up. Of course, the update account is going to be coming out later on this morning. Sunny, windy, dry, 80. Great looking day, windy, of course. And then the rest of the week, just fantastic. No complaints at all. Cool mornings, nice afternoons. The weekend, we've got a kind of a, a bit of a front moving through here late Saturday. It's going to give us a chance for rain into Sunday. Now, I'm going to say that it looks encouraging for eclipse viewing on Monday. Doesn't mean we're going to be completely clear by any stretch. And computer models, I mean, they're still kind of trying to get a grip on what's going to be happening here, but looks encouraging, not 100% by any means. I'll explain coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, the other man, the myth, the legend. <laughs>
<laughs> Behind the mic, one. of course, yes. No, no, never. <laughs> but we are keeping our fingers crossed uh, for that uh, good eclipse weather. All right, update here. I-10 eastbound at UTSA Boulevard. Uh, things looking pretty good out there now. We have crews that have cleared the area there. There was some uh, high water in this area due to those overnight storms, but it looks like we have got traffic moving through here. Uh, nice job by Texas crews getting that uh, drain unclogged out there on the far northwest side. We have a crash being reported. I-10, the eastbound ramp there to uh, Loop 410. This is going to be affecting our drivers on the uh, far or the kind of the far east side part of town as we just see our maps kind of updating the situation here. I-10 eastbound that ramp onto 410. Uh, keep an eye on that. Stalled vehicle now causing some delays here on 90 eastbound at Loop 1604 on the far west side. Of course, a lot of our traffic coming in there from the Castroville area, Medina Valley area. Going to run into maybe this uh, traffic situation there because of a stalled vehicle. Uh, now the southwest side, take a look at a southbound here, 35 Loop 410, also a stalled vehicle in this location. Everything else looking pretty good across the city of San Antonio. Want to give you one more quick shot here from some other cameras. 281 Overlook Parkway, traffic moving pretty good in both directions there. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. Kerr County and Kerrville first responders gearing up for the big crowds expected for Monday's total solar eclipse. So over 50 deputies will be stationed across the county, and they have requested that help of 20 Texas Public Safety Troopers and Air Life Unit to help cover the event. Now, Kerrville police officers will be backed up by San Antonio area officers. Every ambulance and fire truck will be deployed to strategic locations. There are certain things that law enforcement are asking visitors to bring with them if they are planning to leave after the eclipse is over. And you can see that list on our website at KSA.com. Back here in San Antonio, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is concerned about our local blood supply and the eclipse. So with thousands of people coming to the Hill Country, extra blood will need to be available for extra accidents or emergencies. KSAT's Courtney Friedman tells us it will take you need your it will take your help rather to boost a supply that was already running low. Jacob Ralsick donates blood and platelets for a special reason. My uh, maternal grandmother passed away from cancer at age 43, and so that's the big driver. What he didn't know is his blood may help people visiting South Texas from states and even countries away. The total solar eclipse is bringing thousands and thousands to smaller communities like those in the hill country. That increases the number of potential accidents or traumatic injuries, and medical centers want to be ready. There are some uh, strategic locations where blood will be pre-positioned. South Texas Blood and Tissue Center supports 48 counties and over 100 medical centers. Specialized program coordinator William Bullock says there's only so much they can pre-plan, so they have multiple transportation modes available. The Gridlock is, is going to be almost inevitable. If there's a large event, we have difficulty getting there with the ground units. Uh, we can get the blood there via the helicopter. Bullock is also keeping in mind all the local cancer or sickle cell patients who depend on blood for their routine procedures. So it, it's a balancing act for sure. The main problem isn't coordination, it's supply. And here at the center, the inventory is already low. Take a look at this. This is O negative, which is the universal blood type. There's only two rows filled. All of this is empty. What they're depending on are donors like Gabrelsic. This is the first time I've done a back to back. So this was seven days ago. So it's platelets. So you can do that every every seven days. He and Bullock are confident the community will step up in the next week. Everyone really does kind of galvanize together to to help their neighbors out. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. We've got more Weather Authority glasses to give away every day for the rest of the week. The one today is at Tacos Norteño on Hebner. You can hop in line to get your glasses at 5 p.m. The giveaway is at 6. There are only 300 glasses available, so make sure you show up early. Times and locations for the other giveaways are also on our website right now. And a reminder, if you have questions about the eclipse, we're going to answer them. The KSET Weather Team will host a live Q&A live stream tomorrow night where they will address all eclipse questions. So just scan this QR code for instant access to the KSET Eclipse Authority webpage. There you'll find every KSET Eclipse related story in one place. The 80 Morning Spotlight, getting real world experience while giving back. That's at the heart of BearFest. The annual film festival pairs local high school students with nonprofits to put their efforts in the spotlight. That's right. The 8th annual Bear Fest showcased the audio and visual works of students from 19 area high schools. So after six months of work, they celebrated in style with a red carpet event hosted by KSAP meteorologist Sarah Spivey. 
These students put their skills to use by filming videos for 19 local nonprofits that's organized by TRL Productions. Its board president says it is a beneficial experience for everyone involved. Students get the experience they need to be working with real professional clients. The nonprofits get these marketing assets that they use to fulfill their mission. And in general, we're introducing kids to a career path. Schools took home honors for categories in best storytelling, picture and cinematography, just to name a few. But win or lose, students have new material for their portfolios and nonprofits have fresh videos to help promote their work in the community. So here's a look at some of last night's winners. Best Picture went to East Central. Best Original Music, Bernie Champion. Best Editing went to Lee. Best Graphic Design, Somerset. Most Creative went to Johnson High School. The full list of winners will be on our website at KSAT.com. Congratulations to everybody. Look at how happy everybody was. Yeah, congrats. It was an exciting night for everyone. Right now, this morning, 638, 60 degrees. Well, just ahead, the eclipse isn't just cool to see. It's also a huge scientific opportunity. Our Mia Montgomery checks out some local research opportunities that are taking place during the eclipse. We're outside right now with live cam, the star of the show. The sun is still down, slowly starting to work its way up. And good news, after overnight storms, looks like those clouds are starting to break. Welcome back on your Tuesday morning. Let's check out the clock. Time is ticking down for the total solar eclipse. Six days, six hours, 47 minutes away. This event is especially rare and one that, uh, for one, that reaches totality over parts of our region. And that's why scientists are excited for research opportunities from the eclipse on both a local and national scale. KSAT meteorologist Mia Montgomery gives us a sneak peek into what some of the research looks like here in San Antonio. Lab. From the lab to the outdoors and even to outer space, researchers across the nation and right here in the Alamo City are using the total eclipse as a rare opportunity to conduct research. No matter what part of the astrofield you're in, it's a big a conglomerate, a big gathering of the science community. Finest Stribling is a research assistant at UTSA who is currently studying the life cycle of a star in Stardust. His studies use light from the sun on a day-to-day -day basis to figure out what's happening within those stars. And it's just one example of the many research opportunities the Stardust Group at UTSA is conducting during the eclipse. They're doing a lot of uh, things with insects and how insects interact. And we're doing a lot of things for the, uh, the visually impaired community and how we're using like, textiles so they can feel what's going on, even though they can't see and things like that. Across town at the San Antonio Zoo, zookeepers and researchers like Dr. Charles Ritzler will be keeping a close eye on how certain animal species respond to the eclipse. Because so little is known about how animals react to eclipses housed here in zoos. Ritzler says there was one previous study done during the 2017 solar eclipse when the path of totality crossed over the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia, South Carolina. Their findings? That animals started to prepare for their end of day activities. Gorillas were seen walking closer to their sort of indoor keeper areas. Elephants were seen getting less active. So that was our, our hypothesis here at the zoo. This is the home home of the flamingos. Around 1.30 p.m. on April 8th, zookeepers and researchers like Charles are going to be monitoring their behavior to see if they respond to the dimming sky. And while that's just a taste of the research being conducted locally, the opportunities continue in an even bigger way on a national scale. Enter NASA. So back in 2017, the sun was in a solar minimum, so it was not as active. But right now we're in a solar maximum. That solar maximum is one of the reasons why this year's total eclipse is different from the one seven years ago. NASA chose a handful of experiments to conduct during this year's eclipse, from getting clearer pictures of the sun's corona to figuring out if radio or GPS signals could be affected. Their findings may be used in future NASA missions and space exploration. And with the next total eclipse not taking place until 2044 in the United States, it's a rare opportunity that connects researchers from all over the nation to those right here in San Antonio. Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. And KSAT is your eclipse authority. If you scan this QR code on your screen right now, it'll take you to KSAT.com and everything you need to know will be there. Hey, looking ahead, KSAT Community is hosting a donor registration phone bank tomorrow right here. Anyone who would like to be added to the Donate Life Texas Donor Registry can call and speak with the Texas Organ Sharing Alliance 
phone operator and get registered. The live phone bank will air during both shows, early GMSA and GMSA at 9, so the whole thing runs from 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Becoming an organ and tissue donor only takes moments, yet means a second chance of a lifetime. Yes, we will be busy tomorrow. And time yes. now is 646. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. All right, guys. Yeah, so we've cleared out a couple of things. Northwest side, we had that standing water. That has been cleared out for the past 15 minutes or so. And uh, biggest issue that we're seeing right now is on the far west side. Uh, big surprise, I know. A lot of our drivers in that area are like, okay, here we go again. US 90 eastbound there at 1604 North. There was a stalled vehicle, and you could just see the backup here. This is actually facing west, so there's going to be all of our traffic coming in from 90 eastbound right now as we take a quick look here at our trans guide traffic cameras. But take a look at our maps, and we're seeing pretty good backup here for all of our drivers coming in from the uh, West Montgomery area. It's actually right there, this uh, street right here off of uh, 90 eastbound, all the way going back to Highway 211 right there. So again, 90 eastbound, if you come into 1604, seeing some pretty good delays in that area. We do have a crash to let you know about on the east side of town. I-10 eastbound, this is going to be the ramp that's onto, C onto Loop 410, excuse me, I was going to say 1604, but Loop 410. So I-10 eastbound ramp to Loop uh, 410 now, uh, not causing too many delays at the moment right now and it looks like trans according to trans guy cameras it looks like crews may have already cleared that one out stalled vehicle here i-10 eastbound there if for all of our drivers coming in to the downtown area downtown at the y but again biggest backup 90 eastbound loop 1604 guys RJ, did you say you were one of the ones that uh, slept through the storms last night? I did night? not sleep through the storms. <laughs> you did not sleep through the storms last night. <laughs> did, not. did not. Yeah, it was pretty. I had all sorts of issues. Allergies, storms. Oh, no. oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything. You're preaching to yes. the choir. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> the heavy rain and some of the hail, too. I was hearing that. And, uh, yeah, a lot of folks sent in pictures, plus the uh, the light show that was going on. And uh, it was it was quite an event. Those things really blew up quickly. And then, boy, as soon as they moved through, Pretty much Bear County died off after that. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Look at how the clouds are starting to break up. Obviously still looking off to the east, but we've got a lot of clear skies if you turn the camera and look off to the west. And uh, so, yeah, we will have uh, somewhat of a nice looking sunrise this morning. 61 here in town, 48 in Kerrville. 53 Rio Medina, 55 Bernie stage, as well as in Hondo. Very dry air. And as these clouds break up a little bit more and right before and, and just after the sun comes up, we do have the opportunity to cool down a few more degrees. Dew points have dropped down. Think back to yesterday. We had a lot of humidity around here, and look at that. It dropped down nearly 40 degrees in Uvalde, Carrizo Springs, 18 here in town, 20 in Gonzales. So that much drier air has moved on in. That will continue to be the case throughout the day and get even drier air coming on in here, and it's going to stick around for a few days. So what that means is we are going to have some Cool mornings. It's going to be jacket weather the next few mornings. You probably want to grab one even this morning out in the hill country and then big warm ups throughout the day. For instance, like tomorrow, we're going to be gaining close to 30 degrees between the low and the high. And that again, dry air stays in place through the rest of the week. Now jump ahead to the weekend. We do have a chance for a couple of showers as a front moves on through here. This is late Saturday into early Sunday morning, and then we'll clear out a little bit on Sunday and overnight into early Monday morning. Now, this model we will have again. These are long range models. This updated model even changed from the one from the overnight hours. So that's why we're still going back and forth and, and you can't write it in, in stone yet as far as what's going to be happening on Monday. But now the trend is with a couple of computer models that we will have some of these high clouds and some of this moisture wants to come back in here from the southeast. Now, again, this is broad brush that these long range models paint with. This doesn't mean it's going to be raining right here, but the, the opportunity with this moisture coming back in. So that right now is what uh, we're looking at for or Monday as far as some of that moisture trying to come back in here from the uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Like I said, for the next few days, I mean, boy, it is like four aces across the board right there today through Friday. Gorgeous, cool mornings, beautiful afternoons, plenty of sunshine, windy today. However, then that front will come through here late Saturday into early Sunday. We will get somewhat drier air trying to slide in here then on Sunday and a uh, chance for some rain early in uh, on the day on Sunday, I should say. And then Monday, yeah, going to have some clouds around here and maybe a couple of showers, especially down to the south and to the southeast. So still a wait and see situation.
I know, and a lot of people will be asking you, even though we know we have to wait to the very last minute. Yep, to really get a handle on what the cloud's going to be doing, it's got to be those, you know, those, those short-range computer models. So, you know, by Friday, Saturday, obviously, it's going to be better. So, okay. remind me to text him during SA Live later to continue ask annoying <laughs> forecast questions. <laughs> yes, and every day this week, right? Every day this week. Okay. Even when he has a better idea, we are going to annoy him during his other show. Oh, poor Mike. Poor Six fifty-one, fifty-nine degrees. Hey, this morning we want to wish a happy birthday to our news director Mario. He's one of our, on the right. Yes, he's one of oh our favorite things here. <laughs> Mario, good morning. We hope you have the best day today, and we thank you for all you do. He is a good guy. Happy birthday, boss. I know that sounds weird, but that's you. <laughs> All right, 655 right now. Let's get you outside the door. A quick check of traffic here. And if you're driving the far west side, big thing that we're looking at is a stalled vehicle causing a major backup here. US 90 eastbound at 1604 north. So that's the camera that we're looking at right now. It's causing pretty good delays here for a lot of our drivers in that area. Traffic all backed up all the way to West Montgomery on 90 eastbound coming in from Casterville. Also have a stalled vehicle being reported I-10 eastbound at 35 right there downtown at the Y. So you do see some traffic already backing up in this area and the rest of the city everything else is looking pretty good if you're about to head out right now seeing it just a couple of smaller things kind of pop up but no major issues again biggest thing we're seeing right now 90 eastbound there at 1604 mike all right we uh, continue to see the clouds kind of break up a little bit there looking off to the east maybe a couple of leftover showers in some of our extreme uh, southeastern counties this morning but we will continue to clear on out we are now down to 56 degrees so we've dropped five degrees just in the past hour 48 there in kerrville and throughout the day, it is going to be absolutely fantastic, kind of windy, dry air up to 80 degrees. And boy, the next few days, get outside and enjoy it. Chilly mornings, beautiful afternoons. We're going to be gaining 30 degrees basically each and every day. And then a chance for some rain overnight Saturday into Sunday. And some clouds are going to be around on Monday. We're just going to keep watching for the next few days. Hopefully it'll change. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys.